Let's connect with uh, Dr. Bimal Jalan, former RBI governor, who joins us from New Delhi. Uh, Mr. Jalan, good morning. Thank you for joining us. The economist, uh, Mr. Manmohan Singh, is now in charge of uh, the finance department. Uh, as India Inc. and markets, they seem to be rather happy with the change of this guard. What is your assessment? Uh, but I am saying that I am very pleased that the finance minister has taken over as the finance minister just now, at least for some time. And he is the, he, I mean, I'm not making a personal remark, but we have the, I think, great privilege of having somebody who has administrative experience of, you know, from the ground level, as it were, in the Ministry of Finance, policy levels at the highest levels of the Ministry of Finance, political experience as the Finance Minister and the Prime Minister of India for a very long period. So I'm very glad that all the uncertainty, everything else that you are seeing, that you would now have a leader who can probably resolve all these issues and that we will. Dr. Zulan, how different do you expect things to be since he is a very free market economist at the end of the day? No, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, you know, free market or not free market. I mean, you would have, for example, subsidies, you would have PDS, you can't have free market in food grains, you can't have free market in this, that or the other. These are longer term issues, we can debate them, we can, you know, we can try and reconcile the politics of it here, there. But the main issue is that if you put your sort of finger on the button about fiscal deficit, say, then we have to find a solution to that problem. And that problem has to be consistent with the political environment that we have I mean, and, and with the economic uh, opportunities or economic problems that we face. And I have a feeling that we'll find solutions to some of these issues now. They may not be perfect. They may not be, and let us not concentrate on so-called reforms. You know, it is the same India which was supposed to be at the top rank with, uh, you know, say, without what we are talking about today. And why are we talking about whatever we are talking about reforms? Because everybody in authority is talking about that. But I would say talk less, except in the media. Not to the media, <laughs> but talk less, do more. That's my prescription. That's a fair point. But Mr. Jalan, if you assess the first few days of Manmohan Singh as the, as the finance minister, well, he has spoken about investments, mutual funds, taxes and insurance. How do you think he will be different from his predecessor, Mr. Pranab Mukherjee? No, I won't compare the two. I would only say that as a citizen of India, I am very happy that he is where he is today. And if India's prospects are what they will be during this particular uh, regime, it will be entirely to the credit of him. Because, you know, he has all these issues that he has outlined are the real issues. And I'm, you know, I mean, it's not only because I've worked with him in the past uh, in different capacities, but also that whatever he has said has a great deal of substance and a great deal of uh, opportunity. So I think we should be very grateful that he is sparing the time to look after the issues which have been bothering investors, corporates, people of India, consumers, including consumers. So, I mean, it is a, it's a very good thing to have done. Right, Dr. Jalan, many reforms are waiting to take off as the head of the cabinet and as the prime minister, he has the elbow room and the authority. Uh, do you think it will be easier for him to now push through these? No, I mean, of course it is easier for him to push through these now that he, has, he knows what the political consensus is and so on. No, but what I, the point I want to make is that we are a political democracy. We are a government of the parties which are in power. So it is the process which is much more important. I mean, then the end result of reform, because we have done a lot of things. We have been growing at 8%, 9%. We had low inflation. We handled some of the worst crises in our history, like the Asian crisis or 1991 crisis and so on, and we did it well. And we have the opportunities, because we are not dependent on inflows from abroad as deeply as many of the other countries are. We are not dependent on the, for savings or investment or infrastructure demand or, or FMCG, what, do you, what you call the, uh, consumer, uh, the consumer demand for products, it's also very high. So everything is there. So I would say that whatever we can do, whatever we can achieve with political, you know, with multi-trade, multi not trade, multi-retail, not multi-retail, let us do it. If we can, we should, otherwise don't announce, you say it will stay at it.
But Mr. Jalan, some of the key reforms, uh, reforms like FDI and retail, aviation, banking, along with insurance, they have been stalled for a while. Uh, is it slightly unfair to blame it on uh, Finance Minister uh, alone in an era of current coalition politics? The main problem that India faces today that we say we will do it, but we don't do it. Therefore, you have a problem of expectations. And supposing, supposing, for instance, I mean, you simply said that I won't do anything. I think there will be more certainty. So the main problem that we face uh, today is uncertainty. We can announce something, everybody is talking, and uh, I would say that we will be much better off if we talk less all around. You know, I mean, you just look up your newspapers or your announcements. I mean, four, five, six people are always talking about inflation rate would be this, GDP would be this. Then you go into this fact that it is not that, it is something else. You know, why? Why don't we do whatever you want to do? And uh, so my, my, my suggestion, you know, through your channel is really that there is nothing that India cannot do. I mean, if you look around, our growth rate has declined, yes. Our inflation is higher, yes, but if you compare our growth rate with a lot of other developing countries, it is still very high. And uh, it can, you know, our savings are high, our reserves are high, our system, the entrepreneurial energies are high. So what it stops India? Uh, it is uncertainty. It is that you have retrospective amendments which have never been seen before, of a kind, which are very hard to justify. And, you know, so we have issues and I don't point a finger at the Ministry of Finance or the Cabinet or something. It's our citizens, it's our problem. And we should tackle it. Right. But uh, Dr. Jalan, the one thing that has been in the headlines is the controversial, you know, GAAP proposals and the retrospective tax laws. Do you think this was Pranam Mukherjee's big mistake? Was it a decision in haste? No, I, I have no doubt. You know, I mean, I share the views of many people. As uh, I mean, I am not making a judgment on him. There must be a good reason and a bad reason and something, and you make mistakes sometimes, and you take moves. But I personally, and this is just my opinion as a taxpayer and a citizen of India, and uh, not somebody who has been involved uh, in so many things otherwise, is really that uh, you know you don't announce something like say GAAR in the budget, then you find that there is a lot of uncertainty it creates. So you postpone it by a year. Then you do something, and which is legal, which is upheld by Supreme Court, and then you, then you, uh, you know, introduce a retrospective amendment. It's not a question of how big it is, you see, how big the loss is. But the Kandya is a country of law, where everybody can be certain, and there can be of what our law is. And if you have the legal advice that you can broadcast this particular, you know, section in your repeat or anywhere else, then that upholds. You see what I mean? I, unless you cross the boundaries, which may be laid down by um, a press council of India or whatever, who is a, whoever is your regulator. So I would say that it's not a specific uh, point I'm making, but if there is a lot of uncertainty among investors, if there is a lot of questioning about what we have done, what we haven't done, then we have to meet that problem of uncertainty. If you don't want to do anything, let's say we won't do anything. You know, India was going at 8%, 9%, 10%, I mean, even two years, three years, four years ago. So why all this uncertainty? Because we talk. And, I mean, I don't have to repeat it, but if you look at, you know, just the announcement that people are making all the time, and saying this will be done, that will be done, I'll do this, and then this is reversed or not reversed or doesn't happen, then that creates a wait and watch attitude among people. So that, sorry to be talking so long about it, but the issue is not about individuals. So the issue is not about one ministry. The issue is about system I mean, that we are now involved in. It may be coalition, it may not be coalition, it may be individuals, but why do we talk so much? Mr. Jalan, we pick up from sources that the Prime Minister is not very keen to introduce GAR or even tax would have won, and in fact wants to revive investor sentiment instead. Do you believe it is possible for government to reverse its tax, tax decision? No, no, I, I would say that, you know, I mean, I, I can't presume what he will actually do. But if there is a good case for reversing some decisions, they should be done. You know, you take a consensus, if there is, there is an investor's uh, confidence lacking, and it is not something which is vital to our country. You know, if it are security issues, certainly, I mean, there, is, there can be no compromise. 
and there can be no reversal or security issues, emergency issues, you know, of that kind. But economics is about, you know, I mean, what you, if you are investing, if you are, you know, it's about expectations and it is about doing things and believing in what we have announced, what our rule of law is and I am, I will be glad if at least instead of uh, shifting and changing and reversing and moving here and moving there and making noises, we do what we can do. Do it well and keep as quiet as we can in just making announcements. Right, Dr. Jalan when Mohan Singh has been the PM for the last eight years now, what has stopped him from taking some of the decisions that he may perhaps take now? No, 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 please, please forgive me. I mean, I don't want to get into this. I mean, it may, you know, I mean, it is, uh, I mean, I don't want to get into this particular personal issue or whether you did it, not did it. And the only issue I want to tell you is the country is very fortunate in having him in, in, at the top of the finance ministry just now. So what's the bottom line here, Mr. Jalan? Do you think markets, they should uh, now breathe a sigh of relief that Manmohan Singh is now the in charge of economy and he will take uh, reasonable and rational steps? I have no doubt. I have no doubt that this particular move by him will be welcomed by all investors because he knows the job, he will do it and uh, there is no question of, in my mind, you know, there may be political issue here or there, but whatever political issue are, they can be reconciled. Supposing we can't do multi-retail uh, multi trade. I mean, that's not the, you know, India has not had multi-retail trade, India didn't have, you know, free uh, direct investment in retail, but we were growing. But it is a certainty that we have to impart. And if the government says I will do it, or the government says we will do it, then it must do that. Mm. So keeping 2014 general elections in mind, the Congress party will perhaps want uh, populist measures, you know, to come in as well. Do you think Manmohan Singh will face political constraints then? So of course, political constraints are real in a democracy. If the people don't want something, I mean, just as inflation, you take inflation. You know, we don't want inflation, so that is a political reality. But what you can do with inflation is also a, particular rea a political reality. If you say, the only way I can control inflation is very tight credit or something else, then there may be, uh, you may have to strike a compromise unless there is a crisis. You see, so politics is a part of our system and it's an essential part of our system. I have great regard for it because we are a democracy and we must run with a consensus. But it is the same democracy which has been one of the fastest growing countries. It is the same democracy which has dealt with coalitions. It is the same democracy which has dealt with sanctions, you know, when we went into nuclear power, nuclear thing and so on and so forth. So, there is nothing which can stop India. This is really the message from doing what we want to do, provided we take the consensus, move ahead, whether it is slow, fast, it depends on the structure, it depends on the times. And if there is a drought, that becomes the highest priority rather than infrastructure investment. But if you have a good monsoon, you can go with infrastructure. But well, what I'm trying to say is there is always a trade-off, there is always a timing issue and there is always a consensus issue. But, but rather than talking about it, let's decide what we can do. Let's have a consensus on what we should do and, you know, let's do it. Finally, Mr. Jalan, uh, Rupi, I know you don't like to talk much about Rupi, but uh, well, the Reserve Bank of India is blaming it on the finance ministry, the finance ministry is blaming it on global market condition. The bottom line here is that Rupi is down by about 20% in the last one year. So the system as a whole has a problem that we must face. I mean, why is it, you tell me, that uh, the, what the RBI would do on Monday has to be announced by finance ministry on Sunday? Give me a good reason. As somebody who is watching the working of our economy, and then why is it? I mean, that the RBI itself could not announce measures, whatever it takes. But it raised expectations. You people covered it in a great detail. If something will happen, something will happen, something will happen. The next day there is disappointment. <laughs> Nothing much has happened. Why do we do all this? Give me a good reason. Why do we do this? Okay, Dr. Zaran, appreciate you really taking the time out and sharing with us your views.